Speaker Pelosi just wrapping up a conference call with her caucus discussing how to move forward now that the Mueller probe has wrapped. Now, before the call, the House Speaker sent a letter blasting the president's, quote, unethical behavior. But Pelosi also said Democrats have remedies to hold the president accountable outside of impeachment. My next guest, he was on the call and joining me now, Democratic New Jersey Congressman Tom Malinowski. And Congressman, if I got it right, the speaker basically said, go ahead with the investigations, just don't prematurely drop articles of impeachment. Is that a fair synopsis? Uh, I think that's a fair synopsis of her position. Uh, I think that's where I am as well. Uh, we, we don't think we should uh, rule it in or rule it out. Robert Mueller basically just passed us the ball. And we now have to take our constitutional responsibility seriously, uh, investigate um, what still needs to be investigated, and come to the, the, a decision about what's best for the country. Um, there wasn't unanimity, as one would expect in the call. I know a member of the judiciary, your colleague Val Demings, a uh, Democrat out of Florida, he said, we are struggling to justify why we aren't beginning impeachment proceedings. I'm not asking you to put a, a number on it, but... If you had to guess from the caucus, what percentage falls into that camp with the AOCs of the world already talking openly about impeachment? How divided is the party on this? Uh, we're, we're not divided on the need to take our constitutional responsibilities seriously. We're not divided in our disgust with uh, what the president clearly did, both in welcoming Russian interference in our election and then interfering with the process of justice and in investigating this attack on our country. Um, and so, of course, different people have different views uh, about the best way forward right now in terms of holding him accountable. Uh, but we all understand that, that, that this can't be allowed to rest. And I got to say, we're also all united in, in believing that, that the media should not just be asking Democrats uh, what should be done about a president who basically sold out our country. You should be asking Republicans because they have the same constitutional responsibility, and yet somehow they don't seem to be struggling with this question at all. That should disturb all of us. For folks who don't know, uh, you have a career, um, at least a big part of it in foreign service, multiple administrations. You know, I mean, we're living in a bizarre world where the idea of conspiring with Russians somehow um, doesn't boggle the mind anymore. That all said, do you take the approach the speaker does that you should let the proceedings go out because you haven't seen yet a high crime and a misdemeanor or you believe the political math makes this untenable and just an exercise in futility. Are you waiting and seeing, or you just see no point? I think it's a, it's a good question and a complicated question. Um, look, I, I've seen enough to be able to tell you flat out that the president committed impeachable acts. Uh, obstruction of justice, 10 counts. There's no question that Bob Mueller would have prosecuted Donald Trump if not for a Justice Department policy that says you cannot prosecute a sitting president. But impeachment is not just about deciding whether something is impeachable. We also have to weigh whether that process is good for the country. And that's something that many of us are struggling with. Uh, and I think we do need to move the process forward through investigation first. Um, you know, one thing I'm concerned about is that if this goes to the Senate, and inevitably, I think Republicans in the Senate acquit him, even if he shoots somebody on Fifth Avenue. Um, does that set a precedent that this is OK if the Senate acquits him for this behavior? The most important thing is that we establish once and for all that what happened is not OK. This is not the norm. This is not going to be allowed in the future. And we need to figure out the best way to do that. And finally, Congressman, uh, we know that uh, William Barr um, is slated to testify next week. Don McCann got a uh, subpoena today. Uh, hopefully we'll hear from Mr. Mueller as well. Do you believe, with as polarized as we are, that it will only confirm suspicions, it won't be revelatory, or do you think out of these hearings there could be new information such that it could change minds both in the public and also on the Hill? Well, I'm particularly interested in hearing 
what uh, Robert Mueller will say in questioning by members of Congress. What, what did he intend to communicate in, uh, in the report, particularly the part of the report that deals with the president's efforts to shut down the Justice Department's investigation? Did, did he intend this, in effect, to be an impeachment referral? Does he believe that this is something the Congress can and should take action on? That's going to be, I think, a conversation that the American people will learn a great deal from. Uh, our Intelligence com Committee is also going to be looking at the part of this that Bob Mueller explicitly chose not to cover, and that is the counterintelligence piece. Is the president uh, or others in the administration compromised by their dealings with Russia? What is the risk to America's national security? Very serious questions, and Mr. Mueller told us that, that those were not uh, in, in his mandate. He left those to the FBI. So there's a lot more that we can do and I believe should do. And, and I think we should allow that process to, to carry us to whatever the logical conclusion is and do the right thing for the country. And to speak nothing of the 14 additional cases that have been outsourced to some of the other district courts. Congressman, I, I know uh, you've had a really busy afternoon and evening. I appreciate you jumping on with us as quickly as you did. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Anytime. All right, everyone, obviously we're all following um, where this case goes in Washington, but today is Earth Day, and we're going to spend some time this evening taking a look at how dire the situation is and how, believe it or not, as bad as things are, the White House actually making things worse instead of better.